Module 9, we have a uh, talk in or between, and then we'll talk to you a little bit about cranes, sterics, uh, hoist, elevation, and conveyors. We will see a little bit more about cranes later on in the semester at the last lecture. And it's just, uh, you know, so you guys uh, get exposed to, to a different angle. Mm -hmm. So what we want to do is, again, identify potential uh, hazards, try to prevent accidents and, uh, and uh, fatalities on the job site uh, because of a uh, cut or in or between uh, hazards. So we want to identify the best, you know, the, the best ways to prevent accidents, you know, the common causes for this type of uh, hazards and uh, the requirement from the employer point of view. We, we've talked about uh, stroke by before, and uh, the difference between cut in and stroke by, it's uh, to look at the, we, we need to look at the, the reason that caused the injury. Is it because of the action of the, the item itself, the, the, you've been hit, or you've been, uh, you, you've been capturing between two surfaces? So that that will that will make the difference between cut or uh, between struck by or cut in. The the cut in also uh, includes uh, caving when you have uh, trenching and you're under that and then the the walls of the cave, the the trench collapse that will be considered also a cut in. Machinery that has uh, unguarded parts can uh, cut uh, parts of the body or parts of the, um, the, the uh, clothing, so that will be uh, a hazard. Uh, we need, of course, to have a machine that is properly uh, guarded. We want to make sure that you are not in between two uh, pieces of equipment or machinery that can uh, cross you in. Um, protect yourself uh, in excavation sites, and of course training. Uh, training is very important to recognize what are the potential hazards. I've always said, you know, you, when you're in a job site, you have to be aware of your surroundings. You have to be, uh, you know, aware of what's going on around you and, and, and keep yourself out of uh, trouble. Never uh, remove the safety guards uh, when you have uh, machinery that has uh, moving parts, belts, gears, shafts, and that kind of thing. The guards are over there for a reason, it's for, to protect you. Sometimes um, people find that they can do the job faster if they remove the cover or if they remove some safety um, elements in the tool or machine, but then uh, that's going to cause uh, injury. So we want to avoid that kind of uh, situation. Another uh, situation where, where people can get uh, hurt is when you have a machine that has been under service. So the proper procedure is to do a lockout, tag out procedure, where you shut down the machine, you put a lock on it, make a tag, say, hey, do not start this machinery because it's been under service, look for such and such and then uh, it's safe to go ahead and proceed with the um, survey. Uh, it's moving back here. Yeah. Sorry, I think I hit the wrong button. Be aware at uh, all times of the equipment around you. You know, make sure that you're wearing uh, a safety vest, that it's uh, highly visible, especially at night. Uh, so you, you will be seen uh, by the operator of uh, other machinery. I have a short video here of a, a cut in uh, fatality. Let's uh, see this.
Oh, see, that's a, a terrible you know, accident that could have been prevented uh, using the proper equipment or designing the machine in a, in a way that is safer for the operator. <clears throat> in excavations, uh, you need to also protect workers. We've seen there are different techniques to uh, do the excavation. We can slow the angles of the uh, trench, or we can use <laughs> we can use. All right. Is it uh, this? It's not like an emergency system. It's coming from there. It's coming from the from here, right? Oh, I don't know where that is. That's interesting. All right. It must have been some of the... Uh, uh, the, the website. All right. So we have uh, sloping or benching, the use of a trench box or shield, shoring procedures to hold the um, excavation walls in, in, in place. You know, don't let people work outside those uh, uh, shorings uh, so they, they will be uh, protected. Here is a, a short video of um, the, the dangers of excavations. Kind of a funny way to present the potential hazards. The use of excavations is common in industry. Excavations can vary widely in shape and size depending on the work situation. It's an officer's responsibility to ensure that employers comply with the regulations. The first step in understanding safe excavation work is to define the terminology. A bulk excavation refers to excavations wider than 12 feet such as basement excavations. Sloping, a system where the sides of an excavation are flared to a safe angle. Shoring, a support system designed to keep the sides of an excavation from caving in. A trench support structure, other than those designed by a professional engineer, will include uprights or soldiers, stringers or whales, and cross braces or trench jacks. So those are uh, ways to prevent uh, cave-ins during um, excavation operations. Um, cave ins uh, is perhaps one of the most feared trenching hazards. No one wants to be buried alive, right? Uh, most people have uh, actually a tremendous fear that that may, may happen. So, really, you know, we, we need to protect employees from this uh, potential. The, the, if um, an employee is uh, inside a trench and that happens to collapse, you have the possibility of being uh, crushed in or asphyxiated because of uh, uh, the, the, the soil on top of the employee. But not only that, you, you could have a, a deep trench with very poor ventilation and you can have then gases from uh, structures that could be underneath coming in and uh, replacing the oxygen. So you may have a situation where you have a uh, lack of uh, oxygen and then it becomes uh, sort of a confined space. You could have the possibility of uh, electrocution if there are cables 
under that uh, you were, uh, you know, getting in touch with uh, unexpectedly. So th those are uh, potential hazards that can happen in a uh, trench. This is an interesting video because it was... Uh, if a six foot long, well, four foot wide section of an eight foot deep trench collapses, about 10 tons of soil can fall on a person. The, the, it happens really fast and you can if see long, the severity if you are trapped in there. Eight foot deep trench collapses about 10 tons of soil can fall on a person. So it's, a, it's, a, it's a very dangerous situation and uh, uh, then you need to have a plan to rescue somebody if they happen to, to be trapped like that. And you can't use heavy equipment. You have to go you know, uh, by hand, small tools, and try to get that person out. It's really uh, difficult. So that's a, that's a, a, a big hazard, and uh, it's very possible that, that the structure may collapse. So you want to evaluate the soil conditions to make sure that uh, the type of uh, prevention that you want to implement is the best. If you're going to do the uh, sloping or shoring or whatever it is, call uh, utility companies to make sure that they have uh, located their underground lines and uh, also test for oxygen and other uh, hazardous uh, uh, fumes that can be uh, on site. You need to also provide uh, safe access and means of egress from the uh, trench. So you, you should uh, have uh, stairs or ladders or, or ramps uh, that are within 25 feet of the uh, employees. This is, the, uh, this is an interesting uh, video because it was uh, filmed by an uh, OSHA inspector, so it's uh, interesting. Who's in charge today? Huh? Who's in charge today? How you doing? I'm a state of Oregon, Oregon OSHA. Looks like you got a little bit of a shoring problem going on. That's good. That's where it's going right now. Well, he can't be down there. Okay. How are you going to get him out? Jim, just don't hook that thing. Sorry. Watch it. You want to see why he can't be down there? <laughs> That's why he can't be down there. It's still oh, sheets you got to go in. Okay, you got to get him out. And I, I hope you get him out soon. <laughs> That's interesting, the guy is going over there and the, uh, the train happens to collapse when he's uh, filming, so, you know, it, it, it can happen. It's a real, real uh, hazard that can uh, happen any time. Uh, what do you think? Is there a hazard? Yeah, little one. Uh, <laughs> Not much. You wouldn't want to be down there for that work, right? Then uh, you also have the possibility of uh, uh, other um, um, elements falling inside the, the, the trench. You need to have ways to, to escape, you know, uh, ladders, uh, stairways, ramp. Uh, they should be within 25 feet of the workers so they can uh, reach them uh, fast. Uh, the uh, ramps, of course, uh, should be uh, non-slippery surfaces. Uh, you should be also looking for indications of uh, changes in the soil after there is rain or after any uh, changes in the in the conditions of the site. Training, of course, it's extremely important in how to use the equipment, how to set up properly the trench boxes, how to protect the employees from these uh, hazards. So how do you protect employees? Well, uh, give them uh, machinery that has guards, uh, make sure that the uh, trenches are in place so that you have uh, 
shoring system or a sloping system into the trench to prevent uh, cave in, uh, train employees, provide uh, means of access, and also test the air inside uh, the trench to make sure that uh, it's safe to breathe. For uh, power tools, we uh, that has moving parts. You know, you need to provide guards and make sure that they're in, in good operating conditions, that they're not uh, override overriding the safety mechanism. The log out tag out procedures for machinery when you're doing maintenance. Uh, heavy equipment also uh, needs to be checked and. Uh, make sure that it, it's in good operating conditions and stay clear from those uh, heavy machines when they're moving on the job site because sometimes the operator cannot see you so you need to be aware of what's going on around you and not get uh, crushed between the machinery and another part or another area. The material uh, handling equipment, also it's a, a uh, equipment that has moving parts, pulleys, it has uh, chains, and it can cut uh, people's hands or, or uh, clothing. So you need to be aware of those uh, situations and, and put uh, guards or covers to prevent uh, accidents. Then uh, the the be, getting pinned between equipment and a solid object, you know that that uh, requires uh, the employee to be aware of what's going on and take the safety precautions when they're leaving a machine that they've been operating because that that uh, machine can move unexpectedly if not left on a safe uh, position. Demolition operations are also. Uh, cases where uh, the structure, because it's been uh, demolished, can collapse before what you have uh, planned. So you need to make sure that there will be no employees in the area, that you have uh, you know, uh, a safety plan in place to prevent uh, people getting trapped uh, and uh, injured in demolition operations. Uh, well, we talked a little bit about this before, you know, trenching, uh, operations installed, uh, protective systems to prevent cave-ins. Here we have a, a trench that has uh, no protective system, it does not have any slope, it doesn't have any um, uh, trench boxes, and the operator has no means to aggress. Plus, you can see the material uh, stored uh, right next to the edge of that uh, trench. Should be at least two feet away to prevent materials falling down inside the trench. Employers uh, must make sure that excavations and trenches five feet deep or more, but less than 20 feet, are protected by sloping, benching, or trench box. And if you have an excavation that is deeper than 20 feet, then you need a professional engineer to do the uh, design of the shoring system to, to make sure that it's uh, safe to be used. Maintain uh, equipment and, uh, and materials away from the edge of that excavation. You, know, you need to have at least a couple of feet of clearance to prevent those objects to come inside the trench. Uh, scaffolds that are uh, installed nearby, you need, need this to have uh, adequate support and be sure that will not uh, collapse and fall inside the structure. Um, well, we, we've talked about uh, the competent person. It's somebody who's able to identify a potential hazard and take actions to prevent uh, to prevent accidents. The scaffolds and um, scaffolds are, are a case 
assembling a scaffold and disassembling a scaffold is another case where you can get caught in or you can get uh, uh, injured by, by the structures that can fall on top of you if you're not uh, following proper procedures. So you need a competent person that knows and understands the procedure to set this up properly and um, prevent accidents. Do a uh, survey, look around at the conditions of the soil, the conditions of the job site, to make sure that everything is, uh, is safe to build these uh, scaffolds. And then again, training. Training is extremely important. Uh, train the employees in how to, to uh, analyze a situation and look for potential uh, hazards in the job site, so then they, they, can, they can bring them to the uh, competent person. And also they need to be trained on the operation that they're doing, so they can do that safely and uh, without uh, accidents. Uh, again, evaluate the soil conditions to decide what is the appropriate uh, system that we need to set in place, either sloping, shoring, uh, trench boxes, or whatever it is. Uh, use uh, plan, pre-plan, contact the utilities companies to make sure that you're not going to hit underground uh, lines that can bring in uh, hazards. Test oxygen, test for the uh, atmosphere inside the trench as if it were a, a confined space. Provide uh, adequate means of uh, access and egress, and do not you know, put materials or equipment within two feet of the uh, edge of the excavation. Those are the most important aspects. What's the, the what's the rule for if you have a trench box that, uh, that, like you saw the one with the trench box, it was like 10 feet deep, so even though there was a trench box, it wasn't gonna, it wasn't gonna act um, effectively secure the guy. If the guy was in there working on the pipe, the, the, if the bank gave in, it would still fall inside because it was so high. What's the rule, how far down the trench box can be? Is that to be level with the bank or can it be like within, you, know, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I see what you're saying. And I think that has to do with the, with the, the, the soil and the, the, you know, the, the, soil, condition you're and the soil conditions that you have. Because uh, what, what, what you're saying is, okay, we have a, a trench here, and then we have uh, the, the trench box. So let's say the trench box is shorter, something like that. So we have a potential of this, uh, this section of the, the, the trench collapsing and getting inside. So you're asking if there is any regulation about these height. Correct. Yeah, I don't think there is a regulation per se. I think it has to do with the competent person, somebody that can evaluate the soil conditions and decide if uh, they need to, you know, cut this up, make some sloping, and then, you know, prevent that section from falling inside. And then also looking at, okay, uh, what type of soil do we have here and how high this is. If we have a heavy rocks, it may be different from. Sorry. Okay. I'm sorry. It's his turn. Yeah. <laughs> With a little music. Yeah. So, I'm sorry. You know that that's a, a a competent person should should evaluate the the conditions on the side. You know what is the best way to to prevent. We normally I normally teach them if it's if we're in if we're in asphalt or a lime rock we're going through a lime rock base. We typically won't cut back, um, but if we're in any type of soil, I always make them bench yeah. it from the top top of the thing back. I make them right. not bench slope. Slope, yeah. Yeah, so the, the best thing you can do is chop those corners off. If mm -hmm. most trench, um, most trench boxes like that, uh, what OSHA says is that it has to be above the edge of the excavation by 18 inches. Oh, so yeah. that it acts as a tow board. Yeah. So that if you're walking around and the supervisor comes out, hey, what are you guys doing down there? And I kick a piece of pipe, it, will. it, it hits the, the metal plate there. Right. So you should have 18 inches of gap there. So if you don't, you chop the corners until you so have, you have it. Okay. And then from the bottom, there's also a gap that you need to 
you can't be more than a certain distance from the bottom of your excavation. Right, right. Okay. Right, because right. right. some people side. some people cut V so that when they drop it down, it only comes down to about this far, and then you have no protection on you, and you can get blowed right. off from under. What happens with the lime rock is you have to be careful, because eventually it will chip in in the back. Remember, you have your lime rock is set, but the minute your, your trench box is not holding. I'm talking about like Doral when you're going through and it's all lime rock. It's just oh, no, no, no. Then, yeah. then there you don't even need a trench box. Uh, you got to start the trench box even though you have if, if, you know, I, I don't understand, but if, five if feet, you have five feet, most, you most crews protection. don't. You'll yeah. look, most yeah. people will go. No, no, you have, have to, depth, but, depth, though. but if you put a. No, 15 feet with a, a drainage no, trench yeah, in Miami. No, yeah. Yeah. But you don't have to put a person in 10 feet. What we do is we'll dig down 15 feet because the pipe's actually four feet from the top, but it's full of rock, so yeah. we don't put anybody in there. We just put the fabric across, mm -hmm. dump our rock in, and fill it up, and yeah. then it's and then you you fill it up to the where the pipe comes. Yeah, to it's the, five feet, four feet from the top of the excavation. Right, well, you, you you want the pipe to be above the water table above so water. that you st you can store water. In. Yeah. But you're using a trench box to put in the first no. drain. No, no, no. I don't. I don't put it not not in Miami, but in Broward. I have to. Uh, Broward, Broward's yeah. a different sort of situation. Yeah. Broward, they don't do a fifty foot. It's more sand. Yeah. We actually have like an eight foot hole, and the pipes like right in the middle. So yeah. I have to put the trench box. Very good. Because I what, what I have seen is that they put the trench box, and they think it's lime rock, but it's not. It's the lime rock base of the road. Of oh, the road, so okay. and 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 the, and the trench box is always, let's say, three or four inches away from from holding. It's not holding. It's got no fill. bearing holding. So on the fill, so yeah. it came in, and then you just put it. In. Actually, I recommend to cut a foot behind the trench, and replace all that asphalt and lime rock. Yeah. And step it. All right. Uh,